blockchain. It's a topic we have heard a lot of already. We have in mind these wonderful cryptocurrencies and also it's widely discussed. And today I'm not only very excited to talk about this blockchain, this new technology, I'm also quite nervous <laughs> because this topic is really discussed with lots of emotions. So it's not only a rational which we have here, but it's linked to lots of feelings. And what I would like to do in the next 15 minutes is to talk about this very specific aspect of where is the added value to society of this blockchain technology. So I created a hashtag which is return on society. I had the urge to uh, really try to find the next um, applications beyond cryptocurrencies. And uh, for this, I also need technology, <laughs> um, which uh, makes it, of course, easier. Uh, and for this, we have to go back and have a look at the Internet. The Internet is the base layer of this uh, blockchain technology. And this is the very first website you see of the Internet. It is the CERN, CERN website, and this looks very not very fancy, it looks very rough, very basic. Would you have imagined that the million, billion dollar business derived from it, that so many jobs depended on this, this internet technology, when you have seen this website? It's very basic, it has no design. Actually, it's what blockchain looks like today. It is still at the very beginning, we are really at, the, at this stage with blockchain. So it's so hard uh, to understand and imagine, envision, like this topic of this TEDx talk, to envision what is possible. Uh, when we have in mind these wonderful pictures of artificial intelligence, of virtual reality, we have these pictures of robots very who move very funny in a funny way. We have virtual reality which helps us in our daily life. With blockchain, we have in mind this graph of Bitcoin, the hype. And yes, blockchain is a hype, but it's linked to these cryptocurrencies. We have last year, we had a rough increase, a very steep increase in the value of this Bitcoin. But there is much more. There is so much more. And one point is that we have to look at what is the quality of blockchain. Yeah, you see this uh, blue butterfly. I use this, also I grab this emoji uh, to remind myself and also the auditorium about that there is a, a technology, but it has a human side. It is still, shall be still linked to nature. So. Um, I try to use this part of nature, and it also has a lot of freedom. It has a lot of liberty about the fly, and that's what it stands for. So blockchain, was, what is blockchain? Blockchain is a very clever database, I was told. And I learned, because I blog a lot about it, I created this figure, CryptoRobby, I write a lot about it, and I also am inv involved in projects linked to blockchain. So the internet is a very centralized technology. It has still servers, even though we talk about clouds. Clouds are not nothing else than different servers, computers. With blockchain technology, it's a very clever way. It is so-called distributed network. We have Excel sheet. If we have an Excel sheet, we don't have it centralized, but we give the sheet where everything, every information is stored to everybody. This is the revolutionary potential of blockchain. So everybody has the data. If one uh, Excel sheet is corrupted, hacked, the others still have a valid copy. So one can see if one is corrupted, one can find out easily. And with this in mind, we can see it has a democratic potential. This technology is in a way organized that there is the rule of majority, says what is right and what is wrong. And that's a really 
kind of nice way. I like that. I like this approach. And when you talk about when we talk about encryption, um, encryption is very strong. So this uh, the database is very uh, encrypted in a very uh, very strong way. Uh, it's actually I, I borrow some some uh, examples here. Yes, this one. Uh, it's actually oh. No, I will. Oh, yeah. Okay, I lose, I use this. <laughs> it's really hard to crack it. Yeah, it's like Don Tapscott got mentioned it. It's hard to crack it. Like if you put a chicken McNugget uh, back into a chicken again. So one day it will be possible, but for now it is really hard. Yes, and that's that. Also, the blockchain is. I, I will keep this. I like it. Um, uh, we, the blockchain is already, um, when we compare it to the internet, the internet was strong in transferring information. So you could have access to information worldwide. It opened up a lot. And blockchain is strong in transfer of value. So if you send out an email to somebody, and if I send it to you, and um, I send this email, I keep a copy for myself. Usually that's what we do. If I send a picture, I keep a copy. Now, if I do this with money, I send you 100 euro, and I keep a copy, I did the following. I created 200 euro. And that's not good. Because it's the so-called double spend problem of a blockchain. So this shall not happen. So with what blockchain solved is that if I send you money, something of value, then I don't have it anymore. I don't have the ownership, but you have it. Or somebody else on this planet who is linked to a blockchain node, um, to a blockchain device. So that's the really potential, that's the, the difference between internet and blockchain. That's the main feature. I really adore Don and Alex Tapscott. They wrote the book Blockchain Revolution. I can recommend it. It's good to read at the beach. It's not something this heavy literature, but it's it's uh, for the it's a uh, easy to swallow. And uh, principally, he says uh, these these uh, the, they say ta the Tapscott says it's um, incorruptible ledger technology, which is programmed to record not just financial transactions but anything of value which can be put on, in, in, uh, on a computer. And you also see the blocks of a blockchain, that's the very two um, blocks of a blockchain, the block number one, that usually every blockchain has a start, it's the so-called Genesis block, and that's the second block, it has data field where you enter data, uh, it has a so-called hash, we hash it, that's how the way it is encrypted and that's how it's hard to, um, to crack and hack. And these blocks, if we take these blocks, these two blocks are linked. And they are linked in a way, I put it back, otherwise they throw me out earlier. So um, they are linked with the hash. So you see the previous hash of the second block is the hash of the first block, the last hash. So they are linked to hashes, and that's how this blockchain evolves. And when we now talk about uh, blockchains, the very longest blockchain is the Bitcoin blockchain. You see here the first, first blocks of the blockchain, and it had a mission inside. It had something, uh, a text encrypted in the blockchain, laid down, and which says, Chancellor on brink of second bailout, which means they cited a newspaper and it was telling the people the Chancellor of the UK had planned to save the banks in back in 2009. And this was the years of the financial crisis. So it was taxpayers' money used to save the banks. So there was criticism and the very first block of the Bitcoin blockchain. So the Bitcoin blockchain is a political, has a political message. It's a political project. It's not about money. It's not about just trading and getting rich fast. It has a political message. And I want to remind people about that. I want to make sure that people don't forget about this. 
And uh, that's why I focus on this return on society, to remind people, to, to kick the asses and say, look, it's not about trading, it's not about currencies, it's much more. Why do I do this? Because this brings me back to my roots. I want to explain how it came. It's, um, it's because of first, I love to travel. I traveled Africa first alone, then with my wife. Uh, later, we, we traveled the world. We wanted to see the world. And we traveled in developing countries with lots of problems. For this, I, um, I've, I had to, I was kind of the mission to work um, in, in with a humanitarian organization. I hired, was hired by a humanitarian organization. I worked in Chechnya, in Bosnia, in Gaza, West Bank, and all these regions of crisis many years. I saw people suffering, I saw people with problems. And that made me also um, think about how will the future be like? What can, how can we help these people? Finally, with I got two daughters, we traveled to, um, we, we moved to Asia, we always wanted to live in a tropical country, so we, that's my kids just cho uh, choosing the dinner, because it's like more like an aquarium, uh, there's live food there, so um, we still traveled with the kids, we wanted also to never uh, stop traveling, um, which finally ended because it turned out my wife became sick, she had a headache, it started with headache, um, and it became worse, doctors say she has a brain tumor. Uh, she died finally in 2006, so I was alone with the kids. I had to cope with this really difficult situation, and it was also very hard in the beginning. But I had two main aspects which helped me in this situation. First, I want to ha live a happy life again. It's not my fault that this happened. And second, I want my children to enable a happy life, a good childhood. And with these two sentences, I was very, very um, clear, and this helped me a lot. And it also helped me to not start projects which don't make sense. It helped me a lot to later have a clear mission on what I want to do and what I want to follow up. And this brings me to some projects which I now see as really, uh, really interesting. For instance, you have here Orientum, uh, a real estate project, which really wants to have green real estate project with a green technology included. You have Ulala Banking. This is a banking project for the refugees, for the unbanked people. 2.5 billion people are unbanked in this world. And Hada D Bank, a similar project, Islamic banking on blockchain. So the principle of the Quran in on blockchain. You have Solara, it's a green tech, a green energy project, certificates of origin for green technologies. You have Conda, it's a, it's a platform for financing startups with cryptocurrencies when they have difficulties to receive funding from banks, from venture capitalists. You have Avinoc, it's an aviation platform. This platform ensures that you have less empty flights. So you this optimizes the system, especially these short distance flights. Or this, uh, it's, they have already 100,000 followers, so obviously somebody likes it and they have Eurowings there they, as a partner, so the, obviously the big ones are there, they are interested in this startup. It's all startups, it's all projects I'm talking about. Fan360 is a sports platform. It's something about um, bringing fans together to the idols, uh, to their to role models directly, to the sports uh, athletes, famous ones. So this, uh, this is also possible with blockchain. Did you ever think about sports and blockchain? Another sports project, Sportico. Funding of young athletes directly by small investors. So usually this is a job of big clubs, but this project supports directly the athletes and gives them a chance. Mostly they come from developing countries. I like that. And Yuri Online is a new Russian-Korean project where it's, it's a way of arbitration. So they try to um, bring uh, disputes on blockchain to solve it on blockchain. It's a mediation platform. It's a new way of dispute solving, also on blockchain. And there are more and more. It, blockchain literally brings us the data back. What I want to say is, um, when you have a blockchain technology, we shall first not forget it's for humans, 
And that brings me also back to this blue butterfly. And what I also want in life is to work for projects which make sense, which have an added value to society. And that's why I created this return on society hashtag. Thank you very much.